Hey guys, Gary here. Honda is most associated for their front-wheel drive economy cars. They also offered front-wheel drive performance cars, which became very popular, such as the SI, GSR, Type S, and Type R. The world went into shock when Honda announced they were going to build a real-wheel drive sports car. This video will be on the origin of the Honda S2000. I've always thought about getting an S2000 one day. There is a lot of competition nowadays since there's the Mazda Miata, Mazda RX-8, Fiat 124, BMW Z4, Nissan 350Z, Toyota 86, and Subaru BRZ. But honestly, out of all of them, I'd still choose the discontinued S2000. Little do people know, Honda's first production car was not front wheel drive. It was actually the rear wheel drive S500 Roadster built in the 1960s, which later turned into the S600 and S800. Honda was involved in the heated British Roadster battle of the 1960s, which eventually went away due to safety regulations. The thought of reintroducing a rear wheel drive Roadster was presented in the 90s, but was it viable? Well, Honda wanted a rear wheel drive enthusiast type car which had performance, handling, and styling. It also had to be modern, meet emissions, and be safe. They created the Sport Study model concept car and introduced it in 1995 to test interest in the consumer market. It had a 2 liter 4 cylinder engine, aluminum body panels, 50 to 50 weight distribution, and the high X bone frame which improved rigidity and safety. It was displayed throughout the years and gave them confidence to greenlight the project. The new Roadster was based off of the Sport Study model and there were several prototypes tested before the production version. The first S2000 sold in 2000 which also celebrated Honda's 50th anniversary. The starting price was in the low $30,000. The S in S2000 references to the Honda Roadsters of the past and the 2000 references to the 2 liter displacement. The S2000 Roadster has a 50 to 50 weight distribution and low center of gravity. This was achieved by having the engine located behind the front axle. It uses the 240 horsepower F20C which revs to 9000 RPM with the help of VTEC. It also had a 6 speed manual transmission and torsion limited slip differential. The F20C engine produced the highest naturally aspirated horsepower per liter for a four-cylinder in the world. The S2000 also featured double wishbone suspension at all four corners, which allowed it to handle really well. There was a Type V offered in Japan in 2000, which mainly focused on a steering system that adjusts at speeds for improved handling. A facelift was introduced in 2004 to update some weaknesses and satisfy customer criticism. The changes were significant enough that the US S2000 was named the AP2 or as some consider the second generation. The second generation received the 2.2 liter F22 C1 which was a stroked version of the 2 liter F20 C. The increase in displacement was to help with torque since that was a complaint with the AP1 and because we love torque here in the US. The transmission was also revised to help with the low end to make it more practical for daily driver duties. This did cause the red line to lower from 9000 RPM to 8000 RPM though. Elsewhere in the world, they still retain the 2 liter F20C, probably because of the displacement taxes that are imposed for certain countries, or maybe they enjoy higher revs more than torque. There is an exception though, because the F22C1 was introduced in Japan in 2006 while the F20C still continued being sold in other markets. Yes, this is confusing if you think about it, but if you're in the US, then you'll be fine if you just stick to what we got here. Now back to the US. The S2000 received another update in 2006, which also increased pricing to the mid 30,000s. So just to be clear, we got the AP1 S2000 with the 2 liter F20C in 2000, and then we received the AP2 with 2.2 liter F22C1 in 2004, and then it was updated in 2006 to include vehicle stability assist, drive-by wire, and other refinements. For 2008, we received the Club Racer trim, which was more race-oriented and reduced about 90 pounds of weight. The S2000 has been praised for its high redline VTEC engine, 
balance, handling, and smooth shifting transmission. It wasn't perfect as it did not have much trunk space and interior space, but Honda did provide refinements throughout the years. The housing bubble reached its peak and popped during 2006 and S2000 sales followed the same trend thereafter. Eventually, all good things come to an end as Honda decided to discontinue the S2000 after 2008. So we may have received a third generation S2000 if it weren't for the circumstances at the time. Let me know what you think it may have evolved into in the comment section below. It's unfortunate that this had to happen, but on a positive note, you can still get them in the used market. This is where I'm going to end the video, so let me know what other car origin stories you'd like to see. Like, comment below, and subscribe for future content. I'll see you in the next one.